this video please don't forget to smash the like button and share this video with as many people as you can and if you are not subscribed to my channel yet kindly do it so that you don't miss any of my videos so without any delay let's get started and today we are gonna basically learn about recursion in Golang so today we are gonna learn about recursion in Golang and this is gonna be so 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 interesting so without any delay let's get started Damn. so first of all what exactly exactly is recursion go accepts recursion functions a function is recursive if it calls itself and reaches a stop condition so a function is recursive when if it calls itself so if it calls itself inside right so if it calls itself right and reaches a stop condition and at some point it reaches a stop condition over here we'll see a basic example of recursion and then we'll see a more advanced type of example of recursion over here we have uh, we are importing fmt right to print stuff and we have a function test count it accepts a value x of integer type and it will return a value of integer type we're checking if x is equals to 11 then we will return 0 so if we get 11 then return 0 but if it if, if it that's not the case go under it print x so print the value of x and return text count x x plus 1 so then it will return test count x plus 1 so over here you must be thinking what is the use of return because if we only called test count x plus 1 then if we got like 1 then it, it will call again 2 and then uh, we it will call again 3 then it will call again 4 it will call again 5 it will call again 6 7 8 9 and 10 and when it will call once again 10 plus 1 11 x will be 11 and finally it will return 0 why do we need to return or this test count this call also why do we need to return this function call because at the end of the function we expect to return a value over here we have given a return type and at the end of a function um go will expect to return a value so without return it won't work because go is expecting a return value but when it will reach the end of the function and it will find no return statement then it will not work because it is expecting a return value so when when uh, we get one uh, over here in the main method we are test, uh, calling test count and passing it one when we are getting one uh, um, then what is we happening we are checking if x is equals to 11 then return 0 but 1 is not equals to 11 so it will come over here print x that is 1 and it will return test count x plus 1 so it will get out of this function and it will call test count x plus 1 x was 1 and 1 plus 1 2 so test count 2 will be called when test count 2 will be called over here it will receive it it will check if 2 equals to 11 no not that's not the case it will print x and it will come out of the function and call test count x plus 1 so test count 2 plus 1 is 3 so it will now pass 3 and so on so on and when it will uh, when it will be 9 it will pass then a test count x plus 1 10 so when it will pass 10 it will check if 10 equals to 11 no so it will print 10 and it will come out of the function and just call x uh, test count x plus 1 10 plus 1 will be 11 and it will check if 11 equals 11 that will be the case that's why it will return 0 and the printing will stop so this will basically um basically um print numbers from 1 till 10 so it is printing numbers from 1 till 10 now let's see a more advanced um advanced um example so over here we have our pack uh, package main and then we have imported fmt right the indentation is quite off so i'll just indent it right so over here we have imported fmt then we have our function factorial recursion it will get a float 64 number 
right in x and it will return a variable y um, that is um, um, that will also be a value that will uh, of type float 64 if you don't know um, uh, how re return values work in um, um, in golang then do check out my return a uh, function return um, um, video right so over here in we are checking if x is greater than 0 so the value x that we check are getting if it, that is greater than 0 then do y equals x into factorial equation x minus 1 else do y equals 1 and in the end return so um, this is kind of very very cool let's move on to our main method over here we are printing whatever the result of factorial recursion 4 is so we will need to understand this quite <coughs> yeah, properly so over here when we get 4 we are checking if 4 is greater than 0 that is the case then y will be equals to x into factorial recursion x minus 1 that will be 4 minus 1 that will be 3 factorial recursion 3 will check if 3 is greater than 0 then y equals so that that will return us that will give us x so over here we have 4 okay so over here we have 4 right so x so that is 3 into 3 so that will give us 3 into factorial recursion 3 minus 1 that will be 2 now factorial recursion 2 will do it will check if 2 is greater than 0 then so every time when it will check after checking whenever factorial recursion will be called after checking it will return y so over here when it was 3 when it was 3 then what was happening it was checking y uh, y it was doing uh, y equals x into factorial recursion 2 so 3 into factorial recursion 2 and that is being returned so over here we get this value now factorial real recursion 2 is checking that if um, um, if 2 is greater than 0 that is the case so y equals x x is 2 into factorial recursion 2 minus 1 that will be 1 and um, uh, uh, over here um, uh, y will be this value y will be this so it will return y after, uh, right so after setting y to this it will return y so we will get it over here then factorial recursion one will be it will check if one is greater than zero that is the case so it will set y equals one into factorial recursion x minus one one minus one zero and then it will return us this whole thing so we will get one minus sorry one into factorial recursion 1 minus 1 that will be 0 and factorial recursion 0 what will happen will check if 0 is greater than 0 that is not the case so it will do y equals 1 y equals 1 so it will set 1 and it will return that so 1 will be returned from factorial recursion 0 so we will get 1 over here so y in the end will be 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 into 1 so 4 into 3 4 into 12 12 12 into 2 24 24 into 1 24 and 24 into 1 is equal to 24 so in the end the y will be 24 so in the whole ending um, y will be 24 and then that y will be returned and that y will now be printed so 24 will be printed on the screen we get 24 if we pass 5 over here then it will be 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 so 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 into 1 so 24 into 5 is um 4 okay so let's see so uh, basically 
24 it, it 120 right so why could not I could not do it uh, 24 into 10 is 240 and half of that is 120 so now we get 120 when we pass 5 to factorial recursion and this was recursion guys in Golang I hope you liked the video if you did don't forget to smash the like button and share this video with as many people as you can Thank you guys, bye, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep watching my videos. Damn!